Hey y'all, it's me, Alex. Today I have a video that I haven't like done in a very- Guys, we got a new cat and him and Goose are boyfriends, but they're having a lover spat. Anyway, I'm gonna be filming a video that I haven't done in a very long time, which is a favorites video. I don't know if this is like a monthly favorites. I'm trying to time it so that it can kind of be a monthly favorites. Don't know if that's gonna work in terms of my editing time. I'm filming this on Friday, April 1st. Might edit today, might edit it not today. We'll see. Y'all know how favorites videos work and I actually have like updated favorites for y'all. Woo, let's get started. I'm going to start off with a flop. I was also going to explain why I haven't done quite as many videos recently, even though I totally plan to. Um, my flop is that um, all of my ordinary skincare products seem to expire all at the same time. And that was the problem that I was having a couple of weeks ago. Not the like using eyeliner as like an eyeshadow type thing. It started with my ordinary AHA peel and that gave me an allergic reaction twice. And I thought it was just that, and I had used my other ordinary products, um, my hyaluronic acid and my, I think it was their argan oil. And I continued using those. Uh, my allergy did not get better with that. So now that I have taken all of those out of my routine, my face is doing much better. This is the first time in like two weeks that I've been able to put on eyeshadow. If you have any recommendations for things to replace any of the things that I mentioned, like please let me know. Um, preferably something that doesn't expire super easy. I wanted to explain that up front as a, hey, I know I had told you multiple times that I wanted to film and show more videos and do more makeup on camera. Okay, so now like actual makeup favorites. So my first favorite, is that like I can put eyeshadow on my eyes now and not have them feel like I rub them with hot sauce as a cleanser. So that's a favorite of mine. First like actual makeup favorite, show this in my last video. This is the Lime Crime Bushy Brow Pencil. Well, it's technically a pomade stick. I have it in the shade Sea Witch. It's what I'm wearing on my brows right now. And I really like it. I did not like it at first because like it's in that weird triangle shape and I still would prefer if they had it in like a micro brow pencil type thing where it's just like super super tiny and like microscopic but I really like this it does my brows really good and I feel like especially with this spoolie on the other end it's really easy to sort of blend and manipulate once you get the hang of it it definitely took me like two or three tries for it to really feel good as a brow product for me but now that I've gotten the hang of it I think it looks really really nice and I just find it generally very easy to work with. And I also recently re-dyed my hair and I feel like it matches. Next up, I'll show y'all what I am wearing on my eyes right now. I've used this um, a couple more times in between the last video that I did and this one. I just haven't been able to show it on camera because of timing. But anyway, this is the Lethal Cosmetics Moonflower Palette. I'm absolutely obsessed with this. This is kind of like my first like real like intentional fun makeup purchase that I've had in like a while and I am absolutely obsessed with this. It's my first time ever trying Lethal Cosmetics and everyone raves about their mattes and the mattes in this are like pretty good. I find that they take like a little bit more effort to blend because they are pretty pigmented and also just purples are very hard to make matte pigmented and easy to blend all at once but I don't find them as difficult as I would say like some mattes from like Melt Cosmetics are. I know a lot of people don't actually care for um, lethal shimmers, but I think that these are really, really nice. Um, I used a glitter glue with the ones on my eyes right now. And what I'm wearing for this eye look are this shade, this shade, this shade, and this shade. And I've Oh, and this like creamy bone shade to kind of blend out my brow bone. I think it all is a really nice combination. The only thing I probably would have done if I had designed this palette is change out the like light cream shade for like a dark blue matte. I think that would have been a good choice, but I feel like this is a lovely palette and I really don't have any actual complaints about that. That's more of a suggestion than a complaint. Everything is just really easy to work with. I find the shimmers are like really dimensional which I love and I just love a pinky purple blue color story. Like it just inspires me a lot and I love all of the different combinations that I can get with this. Now that my eyes are like a little more healed, I do wanna do like a three looks, one palette. That still might be a little ways off <laughs> just because 
with all of that allergy stuff I I, I really want to give my eyes like a proper break before I do anything that's like super multiple eye looks to wash off intense type of a video um but I really like it I've been enjoying this a lot and uh I kind of titled my last video as like is this palette making me fall in love with makeup again and it kind of is because every time I go to like do my makeup, I get super inspired by this and it's great. Um, this dollar store sponge, it's a dollar twenty-five at Dollar Tree. It's their charcoal sponge. I own like three of these now because so I lost the first one, decided to replace it with two and then I found the first one. Anyway, um, this was bought on a whim because I needed a beauty sponge and I had been letting my Real Technique sponge go on for like a problematically long time. This is really good. It has like a nice balance. It has sort of a, I don't know how to describe the texture because it's not just like a spongy texture, but like kind of a velvety spongy texture. And I find that it blends my makeup really nice. I usually just do a tint and moisturizer, which you'll see another one in this video. Um, but I find that it blends my makeup really well. It like blends my base well without soaking up too much, which is super nice. I feel like it makes everything look nice. And also I love the fact that it's $1.25. I think beauty blenders are outrageously priced. I've said that for my entire time here on the internet. Yeah, because $20 for a sponge is way too much. And now that I've tried a $1.25 sponge that I really like, um, I think even the Real Technique sponge, which is like six, seven dollars, I think even that might be too much to spend for a sponge when I can get something like this. And I love the shape of this too, because I know that some folks really like the Real Technique sponge for like the super flat edge. And I think that works really well if you do more of like, I would say like the 2016 Instagram sort of makeup, you know, with like the heavy foundation and like the triangle concealer. I think that that shape works really well for that. But since I literally just do a tinted moisturizer as my base, no concealer, no anything like that, I think that this works really well for blending that. Speaking of tinted moisturizers, I tried the ColourPop Fritty, I was about to say, the ColourPop Fritty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer, Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer. I have it in the shade Fair 4N. Um, I got this because the NYX Bear With Me Tinted Skin Veil, my holy grail, has been discontinued. You know, just like everything else that I love makeup wise. Hmm, fun, love that for me. And the other um, tinted moisturizer that I have that I like is one from the lip bar and it's really, really nice. The problem is that the lightest shade that they have is definitely like my summer shade. And it'll work when I go back out in the sun, but I have not been out in the sun all that much. And this I think is a really good compromise. I feel like ColourPop has a pretty decent shade range when it comes to their tinted moisturizers at least and I try and only go for tinted moisturizers that have like a good shade range because I think a lot of brands feel like they can half-ass a shade range because it's tinted so it doesn't have to be exact and I kind of get that but like make an effort please. It's definitely on the very light coverage side of a tinted moisturizer. I think it's a good shade match for me. If you want something more of a light to medium coverage, this isn't for you. This is very much like a kind of smooth out the redness a little bit and give it a, a very, very, very light tint to the skin. I think it has a great finish though. Um, but it's kind of exactly what I need. It's very light, very watery, but that's kind of exactly what I'm going for because I feel like it looks really natural on my skin and usually my goal for my like base product my tinted moisturizer my foundation whatever is less to like smooth out my skin and like make my skin look really flat and make sure that like no imperfection show ever um I rather would use this as a way to like enhance what I would consider the more fun parts of my makeup so like my eyeshadow my brows my lipstick, if I ever decide to do anything fun on my cheeks, you know, um, this kind of provides a very good base for that. And I personally really like it. So, yay! Next up, I have this Eco Tools Full Blush Brush. I got this from a set from Case's Parents for Christmas, and I really like this brush. 
Y'all know that I'm not one of those like super bright colorful wild blush people. I think that like that is a great look for a lot of other people but it doesn't necessarily work for me and that's fine. Um, I love looking at it. I don't love participating in the trend a whole lot. So I don't really switch it up all that much when it comes to blush. I have been using this the same like blush shade for like the last year and a half and that is very okay with me. The only reason I'm ever going to switch that up is because it's from the Noon palette from Midas Cosmetics and they don't- Midas Cosmetics is going out of business so I assume that like once I run out of that blush I'm just not going to be able to get it ever again so I guess I'll have to figure out a new favorite blush. Um, but I- love that I got to switch up the brush that I've been using. Like I think that this is a really nice shape. The brush that I had been using for blush before was like this but definitely like bigger around and I think that's great but I could always tell that it didn't quite do it for my face shape. It worked enough that I didn't feel like I needed to go out and change it but it wasn't perfect you know. And this one is a little bit smaller. It's still very round and very fluffy, but I feel like with something like this, I can make it a tiny bit more precise with my blush, which I really appreciate because one of the reasons that I kind of like stick to my like comfort zone when it comes to blush is that I feel like with the redness I have in my cheeks, I can kind of get out of control with blush really quickly and it makes me look a little feverish, a little sickly, and I don't want to achieve that look. I don't think that that's flattering on me personally. So something like this that still has like the fullness and the fluff of a blush brush without being quite as big as a lot of other blush brushes I've seen. So it still allows me like a sense of control, like I have control of where the color is going on my face. I think that this is super super great and it's also just really soft and it cleans really well. And then two lip favorites both from Lime Crime and I'm pretty certain I've mentioned both of these in favorites videos before um, but these have just kind of been what I've been wearing um, on a regular basis. Firstly I have their Velveteen in the shade Sasha which I bought for the name because that was the name of my childhood dog um, but it's actually like just such a good my lips but better shade and I love wearing this to work because like I mean we're still doing like a mask hybrid thing at work but in the rare occasion when people will see the lower half of my face. And then I have the Wet Cherry Gloss and Extra Poppin. Again this is a good just like clear gloss. Um, I like using this when I don't know what to put on my lips and I have a very bold eye look going on and I don't feel like matching you know a full coverage lipstick shade to my eyeshadow. I got this as like a free sample like a year ago and this is definitely uh, not the full size so I should probably buy the full size soon with the amount that I use this. Okay on to hair products. I've been using uh, the Lime Crime Unicorn Hair Dye in Sea Witch. It matches my brows. It's really nice. I've been using this since like a little bit before Christmas and this is probably in my top three of favorite teal hair dyes. I still fully intend on doing a best and worst teal hair dye video, um, especially now since I feel like I've kind of gotten a good range of products for me to mention. Some like really awesome ones and some really really bad ones. So this has been super great. I feel like it lasts really well. I love the tone, you know, that it gives my hair and it just looks really nice. I recently re-dyed it like this hair color has been on for about a week now but this is also one that I feel I can go a good six weeks without like having to re-dye it and touch it up and it looks really good. Like I only wash my hair about once a week so keep that in mind but this looks really good and I love this color and I love that they make a matching brow product for it you know in the exact shade or at least like pretty close I would say so that's nice. You bathe every day though. I do bathe every day. I just don't <laughs> wash my hair every day. Thanks for the clarification, babe. <laughs> You're good. I'm gonna take a swig of this. And then I've actually started using hair products in my hair. Haven't really done that in a while, but I kind of feel like now that I'm being perceived by more people again, you know, like with everything kind of opening up a little more and I'm like going into the office more. I felt like I should maybe, you know, step my hair game up. 
and so I've started using the um, Pacifica pineapple line as hair products and I feel like folks are gonna laugh at me because this is definitely meant for curly hair but it works for wavy hair you know what I mean I just wanted something to like enhance you know the natural swoop that I got going on give it a little texture give it a little oh you know so what I do I shower at night I put in the pineapple swirl curl defining cream just like literally like this much in my hair right after I get out of the shower and I kind of like dry my hair ish um and then I just scrunch up my hair and it looks good then I go to bed and then in the morning I will like my hair will look pretty good but you know I slept on it so I'll put in the pineapple curls refresher mist and it gives me that oomph it gives me that volume and it kind of refreshes what this did overnight you know what I mean I feel like my hair looks really good. My hair has been looking great ever since I've been using this. Um, I do need to get my hair cut again because this is like getting a little long on the side here, but that's okay. I love it. I think my hair looks really good. That's it for my beauty favorites. Let's talk movies, music, TV, all of that good stuff. Okay, so music. I went to see like a bunch of concerts <laughs> this month. So I went to see Meet Me at the Altar with my dad. They were amazing. You need to listen to them. And the band is like the sweetest people ever. Um, I met them after the concert. They are like absolutely lovely. They're like wonderful, beautiful emo music, but also a lot of their songs I find like really uplifting. Um, and they've gotten me through like a lot in the last year. So that's really great. Um, I discovered um, they were playing with like three other bands there and Ever since we've been to that concert, I've been listening to a lot more Hot Mulligan because they came on right after Meet Me at the Altar. And I've really, really liked them. Uh, Dad really enjoyed their music as well. Like I had heard of them before, but I hadn't like gone out of my way to listen to them. And now I've been listening to a lot of their music and I think they're really great. Um, reminds me, you know, of like early Fall Out Boy, that age of emo music, which I think is really great because I love like all of the emo bands that I listened to in high school and like their new music, but I also have like a certain nostalgia for that era. You know what I mean? So I've been enjoying that a lot. Um, we also went to see Reliant K, Case and I did. Um, and Reliant K is just like amazing. It made my little like 13 year old contemporary Christian music heart like <laughs> really really happy and we also saw at that concert Semler was opening up for them and they're fantastic just like queer christian indie music if you haven't listened to them you need to go listen to all of their stuff they did um uh, kind of like a goth version of one of the psalms which is just so incredibly cool and they also have some good like kind of parody ish songs are about like youth group lock-ins and like when you get invited out for coffee by someone from your old church who's like really concerned about you because you're gay um so i think that they're really really um great and enjoyable other things we watched all of our flag means death and i am absolutely obsessed with it and i'm hoping and praying to like my god and all the other gods out there that we get a season two because like I was already very intrigued because all I knew about it was like it was about pirates and um Taika Waititi was in it and I'm like well that seems like a good and wonderful combination and then I'd read that there was a non-binary character and lots of weirdos and and I feel like even what I was reading from other people did not like actually prepare me for how gay the show is. <sighs> so good. Gay pirates. Um, I'll warn you if you're like a little sensitive to like violence. There is like some but it's also very very fake looking <laughs> like comedically fake. So just like be prepared for that but otherwise it's <sighs> like it's such a good show and I'm really we went through it in like three days <laughs> um so uh season two please soon I recognize that like season one literally just ended I understand that my demands might be a little bit unreasonable but are they though no exactly so good and apparently there's a lot of truth to it too I've been reading a lot about like 
pirates and homosexuality afterwards because I knew that like this is partially based on like very very loosely based on a true story but um I've since learned that apparently pirates would like gay marry each other on ships because it's very easy to die quickly and unexpectedly as a pirate and if and usually pirates like didn't have significant others back home so they would just like marry each other as a quick way of saying like hey if I get stabbed to death in a battle like make sure this guy gets all my money <laughs> so I find that really interesting and you know it's not confirmed if this was ever for like love or anything but I find that ugh, I find that really fun to know about like pirates because I, I didn't have that much knowledge about pirates aside from like the veggie tales pirates who don't do anything thing which oddly I think would actually kind of sum up our flag means death like a little bit like that song i kind of wonder if they listened to that during the writing and production of the show anyway um and then my last media favorite is tiny tina's wonderlands that came out this month and i have been that's like the one game release that i've been super pumped for this year i'm a huge borderlands fan i love it um and so I was like Borderlands plus Dungeons and Dragons, heck yes. And I haven't like sunk like a good binge into it necessarily. I've been doing it about for like an hour or two every day since it's come out. Just cause that's kind of how my free time is like generally structured right now. But I am, I'm having such a fun time with it it is so enjoyable like yes there are a few glitches here and there like this is definitely you know the first release and they're gonna you know do an update as like most games kind of do but it's so fun it is such a good time and I love it so much um I also spent like an hour on character creation you know as one does and I love that the gender options in there were this one and that one I love that I Mm, it's so good it is such a fun game and even case who is who isn't like as deep into borderlands as i am is very interested in everything so i, I can agree with that yeah yeah so like i feel like even if you're not like a huge borderlands fan um but you're kind of interested in like a fun fantasy game that's like very chaotic but still has a plot and is still very fun um, I would definitely recommend checking it out. I've talked a lot for like almost a half hour now. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below what you've been loving this month. And I'm also hoping this weekend to film another episode of my knitting podcast because I know I promised that like sooner um, than this, but I just, life has been weird. So I want to work on that this weekend and I'll hopefully have that for y'all soon too. Okay, so anyway, Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. And I will see y'all in my next one. I hope you'll have a wonderful day. Bye!